Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I'm so glad you could join me today. Uh, I've got my water. I don't have anything special to announce, mostly because I'm recording all of these at once. If you're enjoying these, like, share, subscribe, the whole YouTube thing, links in the description, uh, comment. Uh, I do read all the comments. I read all the comments. Just so t do with that what you will. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to waste the entire first minute. And we're going to jump right in to chapter three of Legend of Luke by Brian Shakes. Stars paled into the receding night as the cloudless sky turned from aquamarine to soft pastel bands of a new day. Out in the vast leagues of moss flower, birds began singing among the still foliage of trees, which stood like ancient giants. The sun rose in the east, an immense golden ball, ready to preside over the morning and noon. Skipper and Bella opened the main gate wide, and all the inhabitants of Redwall crowded out onto the path, surrounded the four travelers. Trimp was sorry to be leaving the beautiful abbey and its friendly creatures. Words of advice and farewells thick as leaves in the autumn. Fates and fortunes be with you. Bring me back loads of seashells, Daddy Gonf. Careful now, watch your step, Trimp. Aye, and don't let Gump scoff all the supplies. Stay away from deep water, Denny. Aye, don't climb any tall trees, mate. Keep that sword close to Paul Martin. You never know. Have you got a clean kerchief, Gunf? I've packed some extra for you. Oh, and don't forget your flute. Martin kissed Abbas Germain's wrinkled brow. Goodbye, Mother Abbas. Watch out for us near autumn. The ancient mouse stifled, sniffed as she straightened his sword belt over one shoulder. Come back safe to Redwall Abbey, Martin the Warrior. Redwallers stopped out on the path, cheering and waving until the four figures traveling north were lost in the shimmering dust. Gonf strode about cheerfully, calling back to Denny, who was lagging behind at a slower gait. Come on, Din, keep up, you old wobble chops! Shambling along at his own pace, the good mole was not about to be rushed. More east, less speed, sir. We've got an early summer afore us uns. You won't, you won't get all wearied out by rushing along like a fussy rabbit. Martin slowed the pace slightly, allowing Dinny to catch up. Always take a mole's advice, Gonf. Remember, Dinny didn't get to be four mole by being hasty and foolish. Their friend's homely face crinkled into a deep smile. I thank ye for ye kind words, Martin. My old grandfather used to say I was wise, even when I was but a infant. Gonf could not suppress a giggle. <laughs> Your old grandfather'd say anything for two pieces of pie, <laughs> as I remember. Denny nodded sagely at his remark. Oi, and loike is not he'd say more for three pieces of pie if you hadn't stolen it first, you mousy thief. Gonf pulled a sad face at Martin. Ah, oh, Denny can be very cruel sometimes. Martin tweaked his friend's ear playfully. Oh, I wouldn't say cruel as much as truthful. By midday, the abbey was well lost to sight. The four travelers crossed the ditch, leaving behind the path and entering the cool green woodlands. Trimp scouted ahead a bit and found a beautiful sight for their early noonday meal. Dabbling their footpaws in a small streamlet, they sat beneath a willow, lunching on apples, cheese, and honey scones, which they washed down with cold, clear water. Trimp watched Martin unbuckle the great sword from his shoulder belt and lay it down within easy paw reach. Admiringly, the hedgehog maid watched the reflections of the water patterns playing along the blade. What a wondrous thing you saw, is, Martin. The warrior picked it up and held it lightly, testing its flawless balance. Wondrous indeed, Trimp, but you must always remember what a sword is really made for. It has only one purpose, to slay. In the paws of the wrong beast, it could become an awful thing, if it were used for evil purposes. As the warrior who is privileged to carry the sword, I am honour bound to uphold two things, the safety of Redwall and the memory of my father. The blade was made for me, but the hilt was always his. Shrimp felt slightly sorry for Martin. This is a long trip we're undertaking, and we have only the words of an old uh, ballad to go on. Maybe your father never really said that he would return. Or then again, he may have returned long seasons ago and sailed off once more. What I'm trying to say, Martin, is this. Don't be surprised or disappointed if there's no trace of him in the Northland shows when we finally get there. The warrior patted his companion's paw fondly. I've thought of all that, Missy. Don't worry about me. 
I've decided to treat the whole thing as a summer journey with three good friends along for the walk. Right at this moment, I feel lighter of heart and happier than I've been for quite some time. So hush now, and don't fret over me. B babbling stream water combined with distant birdsong and insects lazy droning soon had the four creatures taking a short nap in the shade and serenity offered by the surrounding trees. They had not been dozing for long when Martin became alert. Sitting bolt upright, he reached for the blade. Trip Trimp opened one eye, inquiringly. What is it, Martin? What's the... The warrior touched her lips slightly. Quiet, miss. Listen. Gunth. Can you hear? The mouse thief had drawn his dagger and crawled forward. Crouching against the willow trunk, he strained to hear. Gourds knocking together. Sounds like little drums. Chanting, too. Bit far off to make it out proper, mate. He sniffed the air as if hoping for a breeze. No smell, though, matey. Mayhap just as well, too. Martin crouched alongside him and said one word. Flitch eye? Gonf nodded, still keeping his ears alerted for more sounds. That's what I was thinking. But what are flitch eyes doing this far south? Martin shrugged. Raiding party, maybe? Trimp looked from one to the other anxiously. What's a flitch eye? Do we need to fear them? Martin explained. Flitch eye are a tribe of runty weasels. We don't fear them. But they're within a day's journey of Redwall, so we'd best go and see what they're up to. As they tracked... <coughs> Excuse me. As they tracked their way through silent woodlands toward the distant sound, Gonf whispered, Flitch eyes are a bad lot, Missy. They use powerful herb smoke to stun their captives. You wouldn't see a flitch eye till he's right on top of you as they disguise themselves with weeds and shrubs and live underground mostly. Though with this lot of flitch eye raiders, they'll stay above ground and not being in their own territory. Keep your head down and stay back with Dinny, behind me and Martin. Trim's heart beat faster. She was very excited, but not afraid with Martin and Gonf leading the way. Skirting a fern bed, they crept up beside a fallen sycamore, and as they stooped in its shelter, the sounds grew more distinct. Voices were chanting in unison, with the thucking noises of gourds being struck rhythmically together. We the flitch eye, flitch eye, flitch eye. We're not gonna win the lola lola wars. Thuck, 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 thuck. Bushes rustled and a few twigs snapped, peeping over the fungus-ridden trump. Trunk, trimp. Blinked in surprise when she distinguished the shapes moving against the leafy terrain. Close on two score, Flitch Eye came marching past, brandishing stonehead axes and carrying bundles of slender throwing spears. Smeared with paint dye and clad in a disguise of trailing weeds, the vermin were almost as one with their surroundings. It was a horrible scene, heightened by the sight of a very young squirrel, paws bound and hobbled, being dragged along on a rope of vine thongs attached to his neck. Trim's eyes began watering as four rearguard passed close to the sycamore trunk, for they carried big earthenware pots on hangers between them, averting their heads from the smoke which wreathed from the vessels. The hedgehog maid rubbed her eyes, swaying as the smoke fogged her senses. Dinny slapped a glob of mud in her paws, murmuring low, "'You're missy, sticky on he nose and breathe through he mouth.' Trim did as the mole advised, and immediately felt better. She noticed that Martin and Gonf were doing the same thing, to counteract the effects of the drugged smoke. When the column of flitch eyes had passed, the four friends sat down in the lee of the fallen trunk, and after a safe wait, Gonf indicated that they may clean off their noses. Martin nodded grimly at Trimp. Well, now you know what flitch eye are like, the filthy villains. Did you see the little squirrel they'd taken? Trimp shuddered. Poor little fellow, what will they do to him? Martin clasped his sword hilt resolutely. Nothing if we can help it, miss. Dinny, see if you can gather some ransoms. The industrious mole was no sooner gone than he was back, carrying two of the broad-leafed plants. Still with their tiny star-like flowers in bloom, Trimp took a step back from the pungent garlic-smelling things. Whew! Keep away from me with that lot, Din. I can't abide the smell of ransoms. Dinny chuckled as he stripped the leaves and rolled them into small, solid plugs. You ain't going to like this, man, but it could save ye life. Here, take this. Trimp's face was a mask of disgust as she accepted a paw full of reeking wild garlic pellets from Dinny. Huh, we'll defeat the flitch eye easily by throwing these at him. What a dreadful stink. 
Dinny passed the pellets around. Gomp chuckled gleefully. We don't chuck them at the foe beast, missy. We stuff two up our nose and chew the rest. The hedgehog maid looked horrified at the idea. Stuff them up our noses and chew them? You're joking! Martin was already plugging his nose with ransoms. No joke, Trimp. The garlic odor will overpower the smell of any drugged herb the flitch I have. Come on, miss. Get on with it. We're losing time. With Martin in the lead, they sat off, trailing the flitch eyes. Both Dinny and Gaunt were unaffected by the malodorous aroma of ransoms. In fact, they seemed to be enjoying it. Martin endured his in stoic silence, but Trimp felt close to vomiting at the overpowering smell. Traveling silent and fast, they soon heard the foe beast up ahead. Dropping flat amid some bushes, Martin, Dinny, and Trimp waited whilst Gonf scouted ahead. Trimp sat miserably in the deep loam, her entire being swamped by ransoms. Gonf rejoined them, quiet as a shadow drifting over the grass. The mouse thief made his report swiftly. They're camped in a clearing up ahead. Must have been some there already. I counted fifty-one told. Oh, flitch I. Saw the little squirrel, too. They've got him bound to a post in the middle of their camp. Fifty's too many for us, mateys. Tis gonna be hard getting the young'un out there. Any ideas, pals? Martin looked from one to the other before speaking. Right, here's the plan. Listen carefully. Because it all depends on pure bluff. If it works, then we get out of here fast. Gonf, here's what you'll do, mate. And that's where we're gonna call it again. I hope you enjoyed this reading of this uh, short chapter. We'll jump back in next week with chapter four. Again, I'm so glad you could join me. If you enjoyed, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, hit the bell by the subscribe button. I think that gives you alerts. But who knows? We are all at the mercy of the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> uh, until next time, please stay safe. Uh, wash your hands. Be healthy. And I hope you have a good week. Bye, guys.